What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to Stocks and that, the Numbers. Today's Thursday. It's about 2 p.m. Got a couple hours to go before the close, but I wanted to do a quick update here on Fubo TV, ticker symbol FUBO, listed here on the New York Stock Exchange. Now, a couple of things. First, overall, you guys know that I like this company personally. I think the revenue has been growing nicely. It seems like the losses have been slowly climbing up and narrowing. And I believe they're forecasting profitability by 2025. So it seems like it's a long ways away, but in my opinion, it's really not. It's not that not that far away. And we can also see that last quarter, the company broke above that 400 million benchmark. And we can see that next earnings coming out roughly estimated for the first week of May. So about four weeks from today, expecting a loss of 21.7 cents on revenue of a little over 381 million. So we're taking a little bit of a drop down in revenue. But in my opinion, Fubo has been posting pretty solid earnings numbers. And uh, in my opinion, I'd probably lean more towards the fact that they can beat those estimates. But of course, only time will tell. But looking back, we can see the company's been beating nicely on the EPS side, on the revenue side, forecasting uh, revenue, I believe, for 24, slightly below what analysts were expecting. And that's what supposedly began the sell-off from about two and a half down to the uh, high ones, low twos. And then, of course, there was the news about the lawsuit with Disney and supposedly they took Fubo down. And in my opinion, uh, that was the wrong company to take down because if, 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 if Disney teamed up with Warner brothers and Fox to compete with Fubo, after kind of telling them supposedly a couple of years ago that they couldn't help them out and they had to carry uh, like extra content that they didn't want to and they couldn't just do sports. But now all of a sudden you three media conglomerates are able to come together and just do sports in a joint venture. So that's why I, I understand I've been looking at Fubo for a while and I personally always said that I like it. So I can appreciate if you're sitting there saying, oh, yeah, of course, you know, you, you think Fubo has a case understandable i can appreciate that fact but also at the same time if i was a complete outsider and you gave me three or four other random companies and explained a lawsuit in the way fubo is is suing disney and and warner brothers and those other companies in in my opinion it would make sense in my opinion the lawsuit makes sense for fubo like, you told me I couldn't do all this. Now I had to, you know, go through reverse splits and get my stock beaten up and take all these losses. And now I finally found the bottom and I'm able to grow and, I, and I'm growing nicely and I'm able to turn it around. And now all of a sudden, you guys want to team up and come at me, come in my space. You understand what I'm saying? So whether it was a stock we were looking at or not, the story, in my opinion, personally, I feel like leans more towards Fubo, not towards Disney and Warner Brothers. But just the fact that, you know, you can say they, they stood up for themselves and they took legal action, but then they were the ones who took the hit and the stock went down. In, in my opinion, I, I said even last time that I would be buying that dip there. You know, and they brought the stock down to a little below that one and a half level. And you can see, look at how flat it was just bouncing around, staying inside this tight little consolidated range for several weeks. And now we actually have a little bit of a breakout above it. So let's zoom in a little bit here. And you can see, we actually just pulled back to that trend line. So now anything can happen. We can see now markets selling off. The Dow just went red. And uh, yeah, we have a lot of stocks pulling back. I was looking at DraftKings today. Had a great day. I think it was up about 6.5%, almost 7% at one point. And, uh, but, you know, I, I don't want to start talking about all that. But basically, so we back up, right? We're in this long-term descending wedge that I mentioned. And if we look here, we I connected the tops of March 13th, 24th to the top March 21st, 24. And you can see that you had the slight breakout, but it connects to that top right there on Thursday, March 28th. Uh, Steam friends, my apologies. I always forget. But uh, 
you can see that we finally today had the breakout above this short-term resistance trend line and we were climbing nicely now again i understand markets are selling off the stock just took a big hit and it's basically right back at that trend line so if we close above that trend line in my opinion we could continue to see a climb potentially into the 180s and maybe even the 190s but of course if we pull back we might bounce around for a day or two before potentially trying to break back above it but fubo right now dollar 61 up five cents a little over three percent here on the day look at this market cap down here to 480 million what a joke in my opinion what an absolute joke months and months and months ago before all of this recent nonsense happened the company was consistently beating earnings and growing and uh the stock almost hit four dollars a share on its own merits and since then, like I said, as of last quarter, the company came out and got above that 400 mil milestone. And the forecast supposedly for 24 is just a slight touch below what analysts were expecting. And then, of course, you had that lawsuit nonsense. So all of a sudden, we're beating the crap out of this stock up. We're, we're beating the crap out of this stock because... I don't know what I just said there. But we're beating the crap out of this stock like it was all the way back here when we first looked at it right when we first looked at it they were coming off mixed earnings there was a reverse stock split a while ago right so we were in a consistent downtrend they wanted the company to get the losses in check and you can see we were missing on revenue a little bit right and then we turn it around on the revenue side but we're missing on the eps side so they're still beating the stock up and then you had another miss on the EPS side, but a nice beat on the revenue side, breaking above that 300 million milestone. And then beat on top and bottom line, beat on top and bottom line, big beats on the EPS side, back-to-back -back quarters, beat on the top and bottom line, beat on the top and bottom line, right? So that's what I'm saying. The company, in my opinion, has been absolutely rocking and rolling. So the fact that they want to beat it up here in the short term because of some lawsuit or because of, uh, you know, they're saying $1.5 billion for the year or whatever, and, and estimates were like $1.53 billion, I don't even remember. But long story short, supposedly forecasting slightly light revenues, but they are saying that they're expecting profitability by 2025, which leads me to believe that that in my mind that would have to translate to even more continued growth throughout 24 to take that next leg higher in 25 and become profitable right does that make sense but that's just my opinion of course but i i believe that this stock is being suppressed and again with the lawsuit in my opinion i think disney warner brothers i think they have more to worry about than fubo and, uh, you know, I, I understand it's a headache and everything could kind of remain down and flat until we do get the conclusion of, of that of that legal action. But in, in my opinion, I really like Fubo down here at these levels. And, you know, every time these stocks get beaten up for reasons that we don't understand, we do get emotional and we start to second guess ourselves. We start to doubt ourselves and our analysis. And basically every time, the stock has rebounded and everyone always says, oh, I wish I knew I would have bought more. Oh, I knew it was a buy when they beat it up, blah, 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 right? We start saying our shoulda, woulda, couldas. So, you know, just like SoundHound, again, a, a little bit of a different story, of course, but as the stock was going down, everyone's like, what's going on? Can you do an update? Should, should I cut the position? What's happening? And now, boom, all of a sudden, everyone's up, you know, 300% from that level still at, to this day so that's why i always say looking at something like fubo if i liked it at two and a half two dollars a share and now i could buy it for 150 yeah i'm gonna be all over it and the more they want to beat it up as i always say in my opinion you should not view that as a negative you should view that as an opportunity in my opinion but this market cap here, sub half a billion is a joke. I mean, we can easily double from here, bringing the market cap to a billion. That'll bring the stock to about three and a quarter. And in my opinion, that's still undervalued. I say $5. And of course, we have um, Wed Bush agreeing with me, as you see, about a month ago. Maintain Fubo price target with $5 a share. Even the lower price targets are higher than where the stock's currently trading. As you see right here, Seaport upgrades Fubo to a buy and gives them a 250 price target.
right? They're being conservative. We know that because the stock almost hit $4 a share on its own merits. So 250 should be a layup technically. But like I said, supposedly forecasting slightly lower revenue than what analysts were expecting. So they completely took the stock to the, to the shed. But as you see here, Fubo expanding coverage to MLB teams. And also, um, it was a while ago, but... Yeah, see, Fubo's case was they're forced to carry supposedly unwanted, expensive content. That was the whole backstory behind this situation. So you're telling me I got to carry all of your extra stuff to, you know, to, uh, to stream sports. So then I kind of leave you and do my own thing. But now a couple of years later, all of a sudden you're able to come in, in into my space. So... That this is why I kind of understand where they're coming from, but of course we don't know what the ruling is going to be yet. But I wanted to come back because there was the bare knuckle. There we go. Fubo TV invest in bare knuckle fighting championship. Fubo said it will stream some of the Bare Knuckles live events, including BKFC 57 on February 2nd, and original programming such as BKFC Prospect Series. Companies will also co-develop a reality series called BKFC What's Your Why? Now, BKFC Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, it's essentially bare knuckle boxing. And I understand if you're not into combat sports and everything, totally understandable. I personally shifted away from traditional sports like basketball and football, once they started with a lot of that nonsense, I personally backed away and I want nothing to do with them. And I have only really been watching uh, UFC and occasionally I'll watch BKFC, bare knuckle. But the one thing I will say is this. First of all, I believe the ESPN deal with UFC is coming to an end soon. I'm not exactly sure on the date or time frame of that, but... I, I do think it's coming to an end soon. So you always have that possible potential that they can tap Fubo to be their partner instead of re-signing with ESPN again, right? Which would translate, obviously, to a massive explosion, in my opinion, in Fubo stock. And of course, it would start to dip down Disney stock. But more importantly than that, they... See, Fubo did the deal with BKFC... Okay, but BKFC has actually been growing better than a lot of people expected. And there, there's even guys like Dana White who were on record when it started saying, oh, yeah, you know, I'm not really into it. You know, I, I don't know if it's going to work, but, you know, yeah, I wish him the best of luck. And what we heard now, again, this is just speculative rumors, but what we heard supposedly was that Dana White met up with the CEO of BKFC. I think this was maybe a month ago, a month ago. And the rumors supposedly were that the UFC made an offer to buy out BKFC. Now, chances are, if it was the right amount of money, then they probably would have accepted it and we might have heard about it by now. So I have a feeling that typical Dana White fashion, he probably lowballed them. And, you know, they said, yeah, listen, that sounds good, but you're going to have to come up a little bit. So they parted ways and they may potentially, you know, come back to the, to the table and, and try to work out a deal in the future. But the one thing I will say is this, if BKFC is growing, right, and, and they see value in Fubo and Fubo sees value in BKFC, but now you have UFC who sees value in BKFC, then that potentially means that uh, a small piece of that UFC umbrella, or I guess TKO now we can say, will be under Fubo, right? You, you see what I'm saying? Then we could potentially have UFC do a partnership with Fubo, if this deal potentially goes through. But either way, honestly, whether UFC steps in and, and wants to acquire a bare knuckle or not, the fact that they signed the deal with Fubo and are now, like we looked, doing a potential uh, reality show and whatnot. So in my opinion, I think that's all just going to translate to bigger and better things because the audience is growing for BKFC. And that's why, in my opinion, I, I really only see positives here for Fubo. I really do only see positives here for Fubo. And I know that they wanted to keep them down again, 
slightly lower forecast for 2024 revenue below what analysts were expecting, but it's still early. This is Q1 coming up for 24, right? So for all we know, they can slightly beat on the top and bottom lines and not change guidance. And then three months from then, they can beat on the top and bottom line and potentially raise that guidance back to or above what analysts were originally expecting. You understand what I'm saying? So this whole all oh, lower than expected forecast, this could just be a short-term opportunity, in my opinion, to gobble up these shares down here at 160, 140, 130, wherever the hell they want to take it. Because again, once the company consistently beats earnings as they've been doing, chances are the stock is going to react positively. And like I said, if for any reason there's an announcement that uh, Fubo is expanding their, their partnerships with uh, UFC. I'm telling you right now, the stock is going to absolutely explode. But in my opinion, all of this is unjustified. The stock basically hit $4 on its own merits. And again, I, I understand that forecast was slightly light, but this drastic pullback, in my opinion, is an overreaction. Uh, they're trying to beat the stock up because they sued Disney. But in my opinion, looking at the at the landscape of the situation i think that disney and warner brothers are more at fault than fubo is i mean fubo technically didn't do anything wrong they're just bringing up how they kind of got screwed over a couple of years ago and now that they're growing in the space and everything's becoming about live sports streaming now all of a sudden you got disney and warner brothers and all these companies teaming up to try to take something take a company like fubo head on so that's why, in my opinion, I think this is more positive for Fubo than negative. And um, in the shorter term, honestly, personally, in my opinion, I'm really not understanding this. I, I think Fubo should be much, much higher. But I will say that getting above this resistance trend line right now it looks good. And I think the momentum continues potentially to the 180s and the 190s. We're still above this trend line. And if we pull back here again, Steam Friend, my apologies, guys. But if we pull back here, we can see, look at the tops. As we were going down here, the tops are about 179, 180, right? And that would bring us towards the top end of the range. And the top of this uh, wedge trend line here looks like about 195, maybe. So if we switch over here to stock charts, if we look at the daily, we can see looking at the pivot points, previous support level was 167. Stock today hit a high of 167 and then had a slight rejection. It's down more than it was earlier because, again, the markets really just kind of started to chunk down. But it was holding that 166, 167 mark for quite some time throughout the day. So we'll see where it closes. But it looks like 167 is that key level. But in my opinion, the next stop really should be 182. And again, on the chart, we were looking at that mark of 180. And then we could potentially climb up and gain and keep momentum and go to the 50 day moving average here of 193 dropping down to a support level of 121 in my opinion would be an absolute disgrace and if i had liquidity on hand i would potentially consider going all in if they give me this stock down here at this level because like i said it's not just me you got again analysts over at wed bush five dollar price target that's what i mean we're not crazy in my opinion looking at these numbers and seeing more value than we're currently seeing i i just think in in my opinion i think it's inevitable but here on the weekly you can also see the pivot point support level of 147 stock hit 146 and then bounced and has been slowly climbing since then so in my opinion this may potentially be around the bottom of the bottom right here and we could potentially again gain momentum going into the 180s the 190s and potentially hit the top trend line there maybe 194 195 but even going back on the daily right the 50-day moving average 193 right you see what i'm saying so we could potentially start to run up to that moving average to the top of the range and then maybe potentially reject and sell off a little bit if we back out we can see we're still in this kind of long-term descending wedge but we do have earnings coming up in about four weeks technically not at the apex but we could potentially rally the last week of April going into those earnings and potentially break out and run up to about the 230 mark, maybe, in my opinion, if the company beats earnings again, which I personally feel that they will. But if we throw on our Bollinger Bands very quickly, 
yeah, we can see on the daily top Bollinger Band 166, we hit 167 and then rejected. However, over the last couple of days, the stock was rejecting off the mid Bollinger Band and now we're above the mid Bollinger Band. The problem now, though, is we were up and ran up so much and now markets are red across the board. So what happens is now if Fubo potentially drops down and closes at the low of the day, what what will happen is that'll form what's known as a bearish hammer, which could potentially bring the stock back down to the bottom Bollinger Band of about 148. But also, because we've been chunking down and then we had this tightening, this consolidation taking place, you can see, look at how tight and narrow these Bollinger Bands are here. We're talking about a distance of only 18 cents here from top to bottom. So sometimes when you see the tightening, as you see here, you can have a potential pop and rally and explosion coming out of that tightness range. So that's why I think, in my opinion, I do believe that this stock will go up before it goes down. Even though if they want to bring it down, I mean, I guess I can understand it. But like I said, if, if I liked it at $253, even when it was at $370, I said, in my opinion, next stop should be $5. And now they brought it all the way down to $160, $150. So if I liked it at $370, $280, $220, then yeah, I love it down here at $160, $150, $140. Go ahead, keep beating it up. Go ahead. And then if we turn around in 2025 and the business is still growing and they're signing deals with, you know, the UFC and more MLB teams and whatnot, then yeah. And, and they're expecting profitability in 2025. Yeah, no problem. Beat it up for the next eight, nine months. No problem. Because in my opinion, I am not worried about short-term trading and getting in at 160 and selling at 193. That's not what I'm seeing here. What I'm seeing here is accumulate shares build a position down here at these low levels and then over time as it grows and explodes everyone's going to come back to this point and say holy crap it was down so low i knew i should have bought it i knew i should have averaged down and blah 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 right just like we saw with soundhound so in my opinion i know i'm speaking very uh, optimistically about it but uh, again, we first started looking at the stock at a dollar and it almost hit four dollars and they've been consistently beating earnings. So like I said, slightly low guidance, uh, the lawsuit with Disney, if you want to use those as the catalyst to keep the stock down, no problem, my friend, because in my eyes, I will just accumulate as much as I can and then wait for the, uh, wait for the explosion down the road. But... Ooh, Tesla came back down. Everything's coming back down. I mentioned in the Discord, too, I mentioned puts on Disney. I kept saying Disney was up at 120 plus for absolutely no reason. Now, you can see it's down here at the low 118s, but I don't want to talk about trading. I just wanted to do this video talking about Fubo, and it looks like now Fubo 160, low of the day 159. And now we can see the Dow down almost 300 points here, NASDAQ, S&P following suit, so... Unfortunately, we could potentially close at the low of the day. And like I said, that would potentially translate to a bearish hammer. See that? We are now technically only one cent away from the low of the day. So we have to see where this closes. But again, in my opinion, if you bought shares here at 160 and it drops to 148 again, it, like I always say, in my opinion, you shouldn't view that as a negative. Because remember, the, the company itself didn't shrink, didn't lose a partnership or something, right? There's really no big negatives that I'm seeing other than this lawsuit attached to Fubo. But like I said, the fact that they signed that partnership with BKFC, that is growing in my opinion. I think that's going to translate to a very good partnership for them down the road. And the fact that the UFC is supposedly rumors... Rumors saying supposedly the UFC is looking to buy out the BKFC. So if Fubo saw value in BKFC and BKFC saw value in Fubo, but the UFC sees value in BKFC, then we can say by the transitive property, the, UK, the UFC sees value in Fubo. But of course, you know, we're wishing upon a star. But like I said, I'm, I'm telling you, in my opinion, this is how these things happen. And then all of a sudden at a left field, you may hear that once the UFC ESPN deal is done, all of a sudden they may tap Fubo and I'm telling you, you may come back 
to this company at this point, and you may really be kicking yourself in the ass because of what you potentially missed. And I'm going to end it there because, you know, there's really not much more to say. And from this point, it really is speculation. And we're just going to need Fubo to keep doing what it's been doing. Beating earnings very nicely on the top and bottom lines here. We now have four solid quarters in a row. Even though the stock is basically back to where it started. So that, that that's what I mean. That's why I always say follow the numbers. Follow the revenue. Follow the money. This company has been growing and has been consistently beating revenue estimates. And EPS estimates. So the fact that they brought them down even this low just because they filed a suit against uh, Disney, in my opinion, I think it's a joke. I, I think it's embarrassing. But I'm going to end it there. So once again, to Stocks by the Numbers, I want to thank you guys for stopping by. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop it down in the comments section. I'm usually very quick to reply. Thumbs up algorithm helps me get more eyes on the channel. And of course, subscribe to the channel. That is our handshake agreement. That is how you help me help you. But more importantly, moving forward, like I always say, I understand that markets are rocky and volatile and uncertain. So I want to wish all of you success. Hope everyone makes a couple of dollars. Thanks for stopping by. Have a good day.